Well, hello there and welcome to this edition of the EV Revolution Show. My name is Kenneth McCoy, your host, and as you can see, I have yet another car review. This one is a special review. I've been kind of waiting a long time for this one. This is a 2024 Chevrolet Equinox EV. This is the RS trim. It's actually called the first edition trim and it's a front wheel drive single motor unit. So I'm super excited to have this vehicle for a few days to test around. As always, I want to thank the um, uh, OEM, in this case General Motors or Chevrolet uh, Canada for allowing me the use of this vehicle for several days to do a review, drive it around, do my, my thing and tell you what I feel about it. So sit back, relax and hope you enjoy the show. Now, as I said at the top, I'm super excited to have this vehicle, but waiting quite a long time because the Chevy Equinox EV was my pick of the year two years ago, actually back in 2023, um, when they announced it that it would come out in late 2023 at a $35,000, uh, sorry, a $30,000 US price point or a $35,000 Canadian price point. And I said, wow, this is, this is my pick of the year because now we're going after the mass markets. Well, let's fast forward about 18 months or so, or at least a good year into the reality, which is the Chevrolet Equinox at this point EV. It's still a very good vehicle. It's still priced as the second lowest priced uh, EV in Canada as, as a base starting price, or maybe the third if above the Fiat 500 and the Nissan Leaf 40 kilowatt hour. And the Equinox, as I suspected, is a very capable vehicle. It's a good quality, good range, uh, just an overall great package for the price point that you get. Now, you know, at a base price of almost $50,000, that's still a lot of money. But when you compare that to other EVs on the marketplace and you compare that to what the average vehicle price is in Canada last year, it was almost $69,000. That's what people are paying for new vehicles, new light duty vehicles. And this is well under that price point. In my opinion, you know, uh, GM and Chevrolet have still scored very big with the Equinox EV. And let's start with the looks. You know, we've seen the looks, we've seen this out now for the last year or so, year and a half, we've seen uh, the looks. I like the design language. This is something that GM has put forward to help customers make that seamless and confident and uncompromising transition from internal uh, combustion vehicles, excuse me, into fully all electric vehicles. And this is one of the vehicles that's driving that EV adoption. GM had some really good sales numbers when they, when they started doing deliveries in July here in Canada of this vehicle, and they continue that momentum. You can go to dealer's lots, you can see, touch, feel these vehicles, they're there to demo. So they finally have got vehicles out there and production has caught up. Dimensions wise, it's just ever so slightly bigger than a Tesla Model Y by a couple of inches length, a couple of inches, an inch height, you know, and an inch and a half or so width way. So it's just in that same class of the five passenger, um, you know, mid-size to smaller size SUV-ish crossover uh, is where I would place this. Also wanted to add that these are built in what I would call factory zero Mexico, because that's where a lot of these GM EVs are starting to be built now. If they're not in Michigan, they're at the Ramos uh, Arispe plant in Mexico. Uh, again, alongside the Blazer, alongside the Prologue, alongside the Acura ZDX. Uh, these are all Altium based platforms. I think the Lyrics might be based there. I'm not 100% sure. They might still be in Tennessee, I think. Um, so don't, uh, you have to double check that. Um, and I forget where the Silverados are being built, but Mexico seems to be the factory zero south, a part of GM uh, in Mexico. And, and again, because of the current free trade agreements that are there, they do qualify for that $7,500 federal tax credit. In Canada, they qualify for all uh, trims of the Equinox, qualify for the $5,000 federal incentive, plus provincial incentives where they occur in most provinces here in Canada. So when I talk about value, and I'll talk about pricing near the end of this, you're gonna see that when you start factoring in some of those rebates and incentives, this becomes a really, uh, a much closer to a mass market vehicle uh, than some may think from a price point and from a capability. So I like the design. Uh, I think it's, it blends right in, it's got nice, visibility, nice lines, decent visibility out of it. Um, I think they've done a good job. So let's get into some of the specs of this vehicle. Now, as I mentioned, this is the front wheel drive version, single motor variant of the Equinox. It does come in a dual motor, uh, all wheel drive configuration as well. But that single motor here puts out 213 horsepower and 236 pound-feet of torque, which is more than enough. Again, I sound like a broken record. 
more than enough to keep this thing going um, and to get you up to speed and all that kind of stuff. So it works extremely well. Um, again, it's based on that Altium platform, so intermixing some of those LG Chem cells, uh, and I'm not sure if they're getting it from other suppliers, but certainly putting some of those in there, building those packs and, and underpinning this entire vehicle. The battery pack, speaking of that, is 85 kilowatt hours, so it's a good size battery pack. And what that does, especially in the single motor variant, it gives you the longest range of the Equinox EV class in 513 kilometers or 319 miles. But in this nice 20 degrees, 18 degrees C, decent urban driving scenario that I have right now, I am seeing that 513 kilometer range. And I'll talk about range numbers coming up near the end and what I've seen over the last week. Now, I did a big highway trip earlier this week, so the bulk of my range, about 60 to 70 percent, is highway driving. So I'm going to talk about what those numbers look like as well, so at least you can gauge it. But GM's EPA numbers are spot on what I'm seeing on this. That's what they want, is they want people to feel comfortable in making that transition to EV. Again, at this price point, you're going to get a lot of people that might have looked at something else, small to mid-size SUV in an internal combustion framework, and look at the GM vehicle going, my goodness, the price point is right there. And then, of course, with the lower operating costs and all the other benefits that EVs give you, it makes a lot more sense to transition to them. Now, one thing that GM's worked on is to make these vehicles from a charging perspective capable, both for, for level one, level two, and for road trip charging. And these do today, the Equinoxes today, do come with the CCS port. Um, they will have an adapter available for these into 2025. I just don't know when, but I'm hearing maybe first quarter for to start to see some adapters for NACS use, for supercharger use as an example. But when we look at charging, we have level two is up to 11.5 kilowatts, which is pretty decent. And then fast charging up to 150 kilowatts. And GM claims that you can get back about 123 kilometers or 77 miles in about 10 minutes of fast charging at something that's cap 150 kilowatt or higher capable. So, so before we look at the interior, I always like to talk about cargo space. And again, these uh, vehicles are here for moving people and stuff around. And again, this is not a huge SUV. Again, it's a nice, more compact design, a little more nimble to get in and out of traffic, parking spots, that kind of stuff, but it has a decent amount of cargo space. Um, behind the um, first, uh, the second row here, as you can see with the seats up, we have 748 liters or 26.4 cubic feet. If I put the first row, the second row seats down, which are easy to do, that increases my cargo space to 1,620 liters or 57.2 cubic feet. And you saw earlier when, when I showed the front of the vehicle, there is no frunk in this vehicle. GM's just leaning towards that. Now the Silverado, of course, is different. It has a pretty big frunk, but that's another time, another vehicle. So there is no frunk. So that's the storage space you have. But They've offset it with some little nooks and crannies of storage here, a very capable console, door pockets, that kind of stuff to put stuff around in and uh, take control of things in your vehicle. So looking at the interior, you know, uh, Equinox EV designers and engineers from GM, they focused on style, space, safety and value. And I think that's kind of what I want you to take away from this. It's got a really nice, comfortable, purposeful interior. Um, of course, it's based on that Ultium based propulsion, but you know, things like a 17.7 inch uh, infotainment, that's one of the biggest screens in its class um, that we'll find, you know, lots of storage, lots of convenient areas to put stuff um, and comfortable, you know, very comfortable vehicle, good visibility in it. Everything is where it needs to be. And I think that's really the, the main takeaway from, you know, the interior of this vehicle. As quickly again show you the infotainment in the binnacle as I talked about earlier so it's a nice display you can change obviously some of the looks here in the driver's uh, infotainment with a map or more simple type of approaches when you're using the ADAS or a simple screen usually leave it on this one because I like to see the trip information then again you have your main screen which is responsive it's got a nice response to it you know vehicle statuses all this kind of stuff you can you can dig down it doesn't give you a ton of uh, energy stuff, but it gives you enough that you can set charging schedules, all kinds of stuff uh, on here, even some ambient lighting. Uh, again, there's different apps that you can download for this. So it's a nice infotainment system. And what I really like is from the music perspective that they've done a great job in organizing your favorites and being and having, you know, what you like to listen to easy to uh, 
to uh, deal with and then you've got steering wheel controls in the back for volume up and down and for changing your favorites or scrolling through stations and this kind of stuff depending on what mode you're in when you're listening to music so really good job and continuing with the interior going to the rear section here again it's got room for five four very comfortably five at a pinch of course nice um, again use of materials use of colors use of styles here this one does not have a moonroof so it's got a good headroom in the back you know there's a lot of nice features in here that you would see in more expensive vehicles i think it's done quite well heated steering wheel heated, heated rear outboard seats you can get as well as an option and even heated windshield wiper park feature all kinds of neat stuff to make this uh, vehicle very practical all right, so my driving thoughts of the Equinox EV, um, it's really nice. I mean, I'm sounding like a broken record now that I've been able to review a few of the GM products, you know, the Lyric, the Blazer, uh, both the ZDX and the, and the Prologue, which are GM-based platforms, the LTM-based platforms, but Honda products. Uh, but, you know, instrumentation, uh, UI, all that kind of stuff, extremely similar, and on the GM side, pretty well all identical across them. Uh, and they're just very capable vehicles, and this is uh, just the same. You know, it's been a really pleasant driving experience. Uh, uh, steering is responsive. Uh, again, it's not a sports car, but it'll it point it, turn, and you'll go to where you need to go. Easy to maneuver, um, uh, even with the long wheelbase that it has for this kind of vehicle, uh, it's extremely capable to park and to maneuver around malls and, and streets and city streets and this kind of stuff. It's a comfortable suspension, uh, certainly not a luxury ride, but it handles the bumps uh, very well. You'll get tossed around and jostled around on very serious bumps, but overall, again, it handles it quite well. I'm going over, this, over some bumps down and manholes and this kind of stuff, and it's doing quite well. It's quiet. Again, the pedestrian warning is subtle uh, out there. It sounds like that spaceship coming up. Visibility, everything else is really good. Seat comfort, again, ergonomics with the center co uh, console. It's nice, coffee cups, storage. Everything is easily accessible and thought out. And that's one thing I like about this vehicle. It's a very purposeful vehicle. It doesn't have stuff thrown into it just for the sake of design language or, or to be fancy. Everything has a pretty well has a purpose in here. If there's anything I could nitpick, it's probably, I mean, there's a, there's a little bit of a plath uh, of the door panel on the other side there, even though it's soft touch, that is slightly loose. Um, so from a quality control, it's an extremely minor, very, very small thing. Uh, that's, and a little bit of wind noise coming from this window on the highway, a little bit more that I notice. And it's not very a lot, but for somebody that drives a lot of EVs, I get this hearing sense of, of what to hear that I may not normally hear in an internal combustion vehicle. So that's just probably a slight little um, door torquing down that GM has to do on a service call. But those are the only two things that I was able to find on this car to nitpick about. Everything works well, the lights, uh, everything, um, you know, all the power systems. Uh, it just, again, it works, it flows, it's easy to get in and learn how to drive. Like Tesla, just step on the, the brake, the car comes on, it's put it in drive and you go, there's no start, stop button, start, stop button. So in saying all that, it works really well and they've done a great job again of trying to make this mainstream by not confusing people with a lot of gadgets and gizmos, but just giving them a regular everyday driving experience. Just want to show you the driving Super Cruise in the um, Equinox EV here. Um, I've got to be a little off center because the sensor here will detect that I'm not looking. If I put something in front of it, uh, the camera, it will uh, trigger it to disengage. So as you can see, I've got green on the steering wheel. It's all set. I've got my speed locked in and it's maintaining the lanes very nicely. A little bit, a little bit of a wind today. so. Um, it's doing it quite nicely, it maintains the speed with the adaptive cruise. The smart cruise system is a really nice system from General Motors. Again, though, it is um, only works when with roads that are mapped into it. So in Canada, mainly the 400 series major highways. But it does allow for things like auto lane change. So if I tap the t uh, turn signal here, just push it down, you'll see the auto lane change icon come up. And then it uh, did the checks and it checked and it moved over to the lanes and that stopped the signals and signals that it's complete it shows you on the screen that it's complete so it's a really good smooth system and again it's not designed for high volume traffic areas um, in open areas like this I've got about a three hour drive to get home and for the first hour or so hour and a half it's about like this traffic wise once I get a little closer to the greater Toronto area it'll start building up with traffic and then I will disengage uh, probably the use of Super Cruise. I mean, it'll still keep lane keeping and stuff very nicely, so I'll use it as much as I can. Um, 
but the lane change feature I probably just do on my own. But anyway, it's a good system uh, mapped in here on the Equinox. It's an option that's available on some of the trims, so you have to look at that. But I have to admit, all in all, GM has a pretty good system here in the Smart Cruise. It doesn't have the versatility as Tesla's autopilot, which will let you engage anywhere as long as they can see the road. That's one thing that autopilot gives you, like you can see the lane. Uh, and it works actually quite well for that purpose. But again, it, it does provide the steering wheel nag and, and the sensory input that you have to do. Here, you don't have to do anything. So as long as you're looking straight ahead, paying attention um, and getting ready to take over, the Super Cruise will just keep going unless it gets interrupted somehow for some reason. Um, so it's pretty good that way. It takes the, the, the stress out of long distance driving a little bit to help you relax, but not too relaxed. Gotta still pay attention and be awake, but it's a good job. So here wrapping up on my video on the Chevrolet Equinox EV, I hope you enjoyed uh, what I've been able to bring you. When we talk about pricing, again, that's where I got excited from General Motors. Now, obviously they didn't hit the $35,000 uh, threshold yet. I can tell you that there's a $35,000 base version of this that'll be coming in the US either late this year or into Q1 of next year that'll be available, the base LT trim. In Canada, that's going to be probably around 40,000 or so, 42, maybe 44,000, if we see that. But right now, what you're looking at here from a base perspective, single motor, it starts at 48,199. Uh, they all charge $2,500 for your destination or your freight PDI charge. So that takes it up to just over uh, 50,000, just over about $51,000. But 48,199 is a really good base price for a capable vehicle that provides you single motor with that 500 kilometer range. Now this particular one as tested was just over 53,000 at $53,299. But this is a very capable and a very sound package. You know, I've enjoyed my week of driving around in this vehicle. It's been comfortable, it's been quiet, it's been capable. Get in and go, to, I've taken some family around doing some errands and stuff and everybody's liked it. It's been very comfortable and a really nice vehicle. So when you look at the price point for what you get and the capabilities of decent charging, a good range, and a comfortable, uh, decent size package, it certainly is a recommendation for me, hands down, for anybody looking at the EV market. This is a vehicle that will help many mass market, uh, many people within the mass market uh, entity move into electrification. But again, this is a very capable vehicle at a great price point, and I think GM's hit another home run in this vehicle and I'm finally super glad to finally see these out on the market that you can get them. So I would encourage you to go visit your local GM dealer, take one for a test drive. There's lots of different trim and option packages, both all-wheel drive and single motor that you can choose from to get into this vehicle. Even well equipped with an all-wheel drive version is still under $60,000 Canadian uh, MSRP price. So that's pretty good when you start looking at what these things compare against in that class point for the range, the charging, and the capabilities that they provide. So good job on GM. I hope you take a look at them. All right, thanks very much for tuning in to this edition of the EV Revolution Show. I hope you found it valuable, some good information. As always, thanking GM, the OEM in this case, for allowing me the use of this vehicle. Again, everybody continue to follow the market. It's doing quite well. Um, it, uh, EVs continue to proliferate our landscape. I see more and more of them on the roads each and every day, which is a good thing. Because you know my motto, right? Educating minds one tailpipe at a time, because that's where it starts. So, hope everybody stays safe. And until the next episode, everybody take care, and I will see you when I see you. Bye-bye.